Howdy friends! Now, I present an amplifier 2.1, with TDA 7377 IC. The interesting thing about this integrated circuit, is that it has four speaker outputs. So there are two outputs in stereo, and two outputs in bridge mode, and so the low pass filter, delivered to the subwoofer. But before starting this tutorial, I want to thank all the people, who liked our promotional video, of this same amplifier. Actually I did not expect so many likes from you, in such a short time. Thank you very much to all. Now let's watch, how this amplifier is made. Construya. Construya. Su video Rocola. Rocola. 2.1 amplifier with TDA 7377. I present a stereo amplifier, which delivers 15 watts per channel, plus 30 watts at the subwoofer output with an impedance of 4 ohms. Materials The materials for the assembly of this great project can be purchased at your trusted electronics store. They are easy to get and very economical. Two full range speakers are required with a minimum of 15 RMS watts and 30 watts subwoofer and up. The acoustic box is essential for the subwoofer to be heard correctly. We use a cardboard box only for the sound test. The amplifier can be powered with a 12 volt transformer and at least 5 amps. However, since this project is from car audio, it can also be powered by a battery or a switched DC power supply. These are lighter and today are very economical. Assembly The first thing is to make the PCB. This can be done with the ironing technique or as in this case with the screen printing technique. Now proceed to place the resistors. The terminals are bent at the exact distance, so that the resistor comfortably enters their respective holes. The resistor is placed. And bend the terminals outwards, so that the resistor does not come out. Place all the resistors in their respective place. Keep in mind to use the component mask as a guide, which is delivered free in the PDF file. Below this video, I give you the link to our website videorecola.com. Weld all resistors. Remember that the correct way to weld is done, placing the soldering iron on the pieces to be welded, and the welding is immediately approaching, and it melts on the point to be welded. Make clean, round and shiny welds. Cut all the resistor terminals excess. For this you can use a wire cutter or a nail clipper. The excess wire are used as jumpers. Take a leftover of wire. Measure the distance between the two points, where the jumper will go. Bend the wire to fit, forming a square arch. It is placed in its respective place. And weld. To finish, cut the surplus wire. Now, place the two capacitors of 0.22 microfarads in their respective place. Continue with the four capacitors of 0.47 microfarads. The terminals are arranged according to this need. Keep in mind that the distance between the holes does not always coincide with the terminals of these since the capacitors change size according to the manufacturer. Place the 0.1 microfarad capacitors in their place. Weld all polyester capacitors. And cut the excess wire from the terminals.
Now take an electrolytic capacitor. The positive terminal is bent outside and upwards. And place the capacitor respecting the polarity shown in the component mask. Proceed to place all the electrolytic capacitors. You must pay close attention with the polarity, because if you get to put a capacitor upside down, after a while, it explodes. Weld all electrolytic capacitors. Do a clean and orderly job. Now, place the base for the TL081 IC. The base's polarity is shown in the component's mask. Weld them. And we place the base for the TL072 IC. Respect the address shown in the component's mask. And weld them. Install the TL072 IC and the TL081 IC, this has a point that identifies the pin 1. Now place the subwoofer output terminal block. Screw terminal block of the speaker right output and screw terminal block of the speaker left output. To control the standby, you can place a connector, and then control it with a switch. In this case, leave the amplifier activated, by means of a jumper. Now place the stereo jack, on the signal input. And the DC jack, on the power input. Place the volume potentiometer of the low pass filter. Weld. And place the double potentiometer which controls the volume of the stereo stage. And weld. Now, take the diode bridge. And watch that when measuring it, its terminals do not match. So, bend the terminals to the proper distance, so that the bridge enters on the cart. Perfect. And weld. To finish, place the main component, the TDA7377 IC. Weld carefully. If you accidentally join two welds, you must separate them immediately. Now must place the heatsink. This is responsible for a long life of the amplifier. Mark where the hole will go. Drill with a 9 inch drill bit. Countersink so that the reverse side of the integrated circuit is rest perfectly. Apply silicone grease on the back of the TDA7377 so that heat is conducted to the heatsink. Place the heatsink. With a through screw and a nut, the integrated circuit is secured to the heatsink. It must be very tight. And we have ready our 2.1 amplifier of 60 watts and 4 ohms. Cold measurements. Place the multimeter in continuity. The first measurement is made at the stereo speaker's outputs. It must measure infinity, a 1 to the left. 
invert the multimeter tips. In no case should you measure low impedances and much less continuity. If an opposite measurement is obtained, check the PCB tracks and in an extreme case, change the TDA7377 IC. The measurement of the subwoofer output results in a somewhat low impedance. This is because there are two outputs in bridge mode. Invert the tips. If you measure each output with respect to ground, you get infinite. Now measure the diode's bridge input. It must measure infinity, even when invert the tips. Hot measurements. Remember that the first time an amplifier is powered, it is necessary to use the seria circuit with a similar power bulb. This protects the amplifier in case there is a short circuit or a faulty component. Apply public network energy. Place the multimeter on the DC voltage scale. And measure the output of the diode's rectifier bridge. It should measure between 12 and 15 volts DC. As it is an amplifier with simple power feed, the stereo outputs measure a voltage close to half the supply voltage. The output of the subwoofer does not measure voltage because it is in bridge mode. However, if you measure between each output and ground, you will see a medium voltage. Now, with the black tip on pin 3 and the red tip on pin 4 of TL072, measured half the voltage of the source in negative. And with the black tip on pin 3 and the red tip on pin 7, measured half the voltage of the power supply in positive. In the TL081 IC, the black tip is placed in pin 3 and the red tip in pin 4, and we have negative medium voltage. And with the black tip on pin 3 and the red tip on pin 6, obtain the positive medium voltage. Now listen to the live sound test. A stereo audio signal must be provided to the amplifier. Bluetooth mode Music Hi guys. Here is the sound check of our 2.1 amplifier with TDA7377. It is a very economical amplifier, very easy to make, and acceptable sound. The subwoofer acoustic box, we improvised it with the cardboard box. Keep in mind that the sound quality of the bass depends not only on the low pass filter, but also on the quality of the speaker, and also that it has a good acoustic box. This is not the ideal box, but it helps us to do the sound test. So friends, you know, thumb up please, so we can continue with this. And visit our website, videoricola.com. Greetings to all.